We are in Corvallis, which yeah. is known for what? Corvallis is the home of Oregon State University. And this is a kind of typical suburban feel. I mean, it's not yeah. urban, right? I mean, or... we're. I mean, this is a town of sixty thousand people, so it's it's a suburban scale. So this is like a third of an acre. But you took just a quarter of an acre, and it what didn't look like this when you bought it, I bet. It looked like a lawn with a row of rose bushes. <laughs> Basically, yeah, it was just a grassy lawn. Like it looked like very much, you know. You know like your typical American suburban house, basically. All right, yeah, welcome into my little paradise here. Come through the archway right here. This is like my front yard. I mean, I have annuals here, but I just like, I keep creeping in with the perennials. That's uh, elephant garlic. It's almost ready to harvest right there. Oh. Yeah, my main garden is actually in the back right now. My main like food garden. Okay. But we see here artichokes, yeah. celery. Yeah, this is like I have tons of artichokes all around. It's kind of the season's done, but like I'm an artichoke freak. I always let a, a few flower. So these are the ones I'm just letting flower. It's just a beautiful flower. The bumblebees just love it. So I like okay. to like leave a lot of things flowering for the bees. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just love the secret garden packed with food plants. This is a beautiful fig tree right here. Nothing on it yet. Well, the figs are just starting. This is a late, it's a late one. Oh, so these ones will actually be ripe like in October. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. And so, I mean, this kind of full of fruit trees. I've got cherry and peach and Asian pear all in this area. I planted everything you see except for this fig tree right here. Okay. I want to show that paradise is possible anywhere you are in this small kind of area. This is actually, this is kind of a crazy plant right here. This is a grapevine that's planted over there. I planted it around the corner. So this grapevine, you can see how fat that is now with my hand oh, right yeah. there. And I planted that maybe 10 years ago. You know, basically I'm creating this edible walkway here so you know i have a school right down the way so this is like this giant snack track that people come and they just eat all the way down the sidewalk right here so this grapevine in here and and because it just grows so excessively i actually trained it all the way around the corner over the street sign and now the grapevine actually is trained all the way down we're still at the grapevine we're still at the grapevine we're still at the grapevine. So this, this is the current end of the grapevine right here, right? Yeah. And so basically uh, I, I prune it to keep it down out of the trees here. And so then once these grapes are ready, it's like the sidewalk becomes this whole arbor. And so you can walk down and just pick grapes all along the sidewalk. So I'm on this corner lot. So, you know, we've got grapes, we've got hazelnuts here and all kinds of other understory plants. These hazelnut trees were here and I just sort of, they used to be like a tree form. You can see a trunk in the middle and then I, I prune them into a multi, more of a, their natural state is like a multi-trunked low tree. Um, and I made them into this archway and so now it's just a very pleasant yeah, little beautiful. environment. I love this too. Yeah, here's the... <laughs> you created a little backyard. Yeah. And here's like thimble berries right here. This is just like a native berries that are just ripe right here on the, you know. Um, it's like browsing food. These are, uh, you can see the baby grapes right here. I feel like it's my contribution to world peace. Is it like if children can grow up and there's just food basically in the public area that people will have a sense of abundance. Like, you know, I'm provided for. There is goodness and deliciousness in the world. Part of the whole thing was just to have the whole interface with the world be just this juicy cacophony of food plants. Yeah. These are plums. We actually, we actually having a terrible fruit year. So there's plums on there, but it doesn't have as, as many plums as usual. Yeah, but this, the berries are doing really well. These aren't ripe oh, yet, nice. but I mean, this is, these are thornless blackberries, which oh. are just like, and this is one of the main places that I just have mobs of people coming by and always eating, you know, and snacking. Come through the, the willow archway right yeah, here. You know. Normally, like in other parts of my, in my vegetable garden, I treat this as a weed. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> but it volunteered here and I just love, I mean, it flowers continually. Once it starts flowering, it flowers for so long. And it's just a very nice, like wispy sort of privacy plant. And you know, of course it's fennel, so it's usable. I browse it and stuff like that, but I'm much more of a dill fan than a fennel fan as far as, <laughs> yeah, but Great. you know, um, come through the willow archway right here. Love it. I love yeah. all these archways. Yeah. It feels really natural, but it's obvious you had a plan here. Yeah. I mean, I'm a permaculture guy, so this is my south face of my house. So I wanted to keep access for the winter sun. So I didn't want anything super tall, but I also wanted to screen the cars. So all of my trees in here, I keep low for the solar access. I want to be able to look out my window and check on my garden and see how things are doing. I want a cacophony of flowers. I want like things blooming all the time for pollinators of every type. And I want to be basically surrounded by food and beauty and nature. Again, like artichokes are just my favorite food. I have to harvest that elephant garlic there. Again, these are just thimble berries that are actually ripe right now. We've got just walls of these things. This is a gumi. This is actually done right now. We've picked them all. This is a persimmon tree that I'm just getting going right here. This is comfrey, which I use comfrey a lot for grass suppression. So you'll see I have all over the place, I have comfrey that I just plant by fruit trees and it kind of flop, it grows up and then it flops over and it just keeps all the grasses down and it brings all these deep nutrients and kind of deposits them like a mulch on the soil. Yeah, these are hazelnuts. And like these were actually here before I moved in. These are like the developing oh, yeah. hazelnuts right there. This is actually, this is a hazelnut tree right here. The Willamette Valley, this is the biggest hazelnut producer in the United States. Wow. We're starting to get into my more like production area. I have a chicken coop in the middle and then I have these different gardens on the sides of it. And I actually rotate the chickens between these gardens at different times of the year. So right now the chickens are in this area and they're just scratching in the mulch and eating weed seeds and bug eggs and pooping and just kind of preparing this. And then once it gets cold and the rains come in the fall, I'll plant this either in garlic or fava beans or various crops. And then I'll put the chickens, I'll rotate them over to my other garden where all winter they were over here. And then when it was time to plant, I moved them over here. So I kind of use the chickens as like a preparation, you know? And then when I clean out the chicken coop, also like corn is incredibly heavy feeder, like needs a lot of nitrogen. So, you know, I, all the bedding from the chicken coop, I went and mulched the corn with. So I really, I mean, the input is I'm getting, I'm buying chicken feed. I'm turning it into eggs and chicken poop. And then I'm growing vegetables from the chicken poop there. And then back here, I have my peppers and tomatoes. You keep them separate. Well, no. Okay. So. The reason I have this fence dividing these two gardens is because like I might go and just put the chickens in this part. For instance, I grew a cover crop in here of fava beans. So I am able with the fencing to just close that part off and just have the chickens in here. Or likewise, I can just have the chickens in here. So I have basically three different units that I can rotate the chickens and the gardens between. Okay. I've been keeping chickens since 1998. And so I've done a lot of moving chickens. So I've had like mobile chicken tractors, but I said, how about this? I just have a stable chicken house and I just have different doors where I can just let them into the different areas. Oh, so, yeah. so the house is always the same. The house is always the same. The house is always right here, but then I just move the door so there's a winter yeah. door, summer door. <laughs> yeah, basically a winter door, summer door. It just saves me a lot of work, really. Like the chickens do a lot of the effort. And so literally I, I will move the chickens and then I just go and plant directly. I just, I rake it a little bit and clean it up. I plant and then I went and I brought in a bunch of leaf mulch from my neighbor's yard and the chickens basically do all the work for me. I mean, they keep the weeds down. So when I, when they leave, if I plant right away, then all of my vegetables and everything can just kind of get ahead of the weeds.
One question though, I yeah. mean, I'm looking at the ground. Yeah. That is leaves or what do you put? Yeah, this is just leaf mulch. I just bring leaves over here just because the chickens get bored. They want something to yeah. do. Like if you give them something to scratch up, they get busy, they find little bugs and then they kind of, they mix things up. I bring out my food scraps to them. They mix it all up, they poop and then it's weed suppression, soil fertility and helps keep the moisture in. There's like so many benefits to and leaf also mulch. probably building soil. Yeah, building soil, exactly, adding organic matter. So you have a demanding full-time job, yeah. but yet you have time to enjoy keeping this garden yeah. in shape. Well, I mean, first off, like I love to garden and I love like taking care of things and pruning. So my main recreational activity is doing the gardening and also just the scale. I mean, I'm on a third of an acre. I can work at the university. I can have a family life and I can manage a garden of this scale pretty effortlessly. And, and also I work at home. So I'm here and then I might be like working the computer and then I'm like, man, my brain is fried. I'm gonna go weed. I'm gonna go like water. So I kind of have a work-life balance because I'm able to work at home. For the last maybe 12 years, I have just been absolutely fascinated by beekeeping or keeping, losing, keeping, you know, it's, it's a constant struggle. Right now I'm doing really well. I got three hives bumping right now, so I'm happy, but I'm, I've certainly had my share of trauma. I, I started, actually I started this season with just that one colony over there and it swarmed and I caught the swarm and I put them in this box and then they swarmed again and I put them in that box and then subsequently I've had two more swarms that I lost but I'm really happy to have gone from one colony to three. For you, the honey is for your own use to give to sell? Yeah, honestly, like we're honey fiends at my house. We yep. consume honey a lot and honey's very expensive. Yep. So, um, so the chickens are happy under there. They have to have a couple spots in the heat, I guess. Yeah. In the summertime, I want to keep shady areas and not just shady areas, but also areas for protection from raptors because raptors will take the chickens. This is a Jerusalem artichoke. It's an edible sunflower, basically. It has an edible tuber. And I think of this as my emergency food supply right here, in a way, because it just grows every year, they increase. But if I ever needed to, I have like many, many, many pounds of tubers stored underground here. And I'm just planting fajoa, also known as pineapple guava. I'm planting a hedge, so in the winter time, I will have an evergreen hedge, because these are evergreen. One, two, I have them spaced at four feet intervals, so hopefully within a few years, in the winter time, I have a hedge screen, so it's just like privacy for the backyard from the road. And then grape, more grape. There's just like grape <laughs> everywhere, right? This is horseradish right here. This just grows. I mean, it's kind of a weed because I don't really, I'm not a big horseradish fan, but it's a great perennial. Awesome. You guys want to check the greenhouse out? Yeah, sure. You know, careful okay. of my, this Meyer lemon here. This is, this Meyer lemon is like the champion of this greenhouse right here. Yeah. I get like a hundred lemons off of this thing. Wow. That's huge. Yeah. It's really nice because it's planted in the ground. Uh, around the, the base of a lot of these, I, I've put a lot of succulents like the succulents are kind of a ground cover. So again, it's, you know, succulents, like they, they kind of hold moisture, you know, and I wanted to create a, a mulch. It looks, it's most successful actually in this one right here, where like the whole base is basically succulents. This is a loquat tree. What's that growing right up onto the roof? Uh, that is Sonoran Desert tree tobacco. Wow. Yeah. People don't actually, I, I don't think, actually use it to smoke. I think it's too harsh. Okay. But uh, my friend was growing it, has a really big greenhouse, and he was yeah. growing it. I love this plant from when I lived in Arizona. Yeah. I was like, dude, you got tree tobacco. I love that plant. <laughs> and so I got a seed from him, and this is from a tiny seed, and I, it's still growing. Yeah. Now it's just like busting through so, the... So yeah. the greenhouse is not totally practical? Or yeah, no. you know, yeah. I, I mean, I'm a horticulturist, so I just like... I. I don't do 100% strictly food things. I just, I love plants. Uh -huh. And so, you know, if there's a really cool <laughs> tree tobacco or Jerry Garcia's jade yeah. plant, you know. What? Why did you have? A friend of mine who lived across the street knew Jerry Garcia's gardener. 
and his gardener got a cutting of the jade plant. And this is Jerry's jade right here. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I have sugar cane back there. This is like tree tomato. I think of this greenhouse as Tucson, Arizona. This is a dry land strategy here for planting in these low areas to conserve water. And it also creates a microclimate because it does freeze in here. When we get 15 Fahrenheit outside, it'll get below 32 inside of here. And so having the plants and the succulents, the aloe vera and everything also helps to just protect the microclimate, you know, and the radiant heat from the stone and everything. This is a Meyer lemon. So this is my, this is my main productive plant here in this greenhouse. And this thing, I mean, you can see it's covered in lemons right now. I mean, this thing, I probably get a hundred lemons in the winter time. But you're able to grow citrus in snow, basically. You know, just a little bit of shelter here from the extreme cold and planted in the ground. So, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a big tree because it's planted in the ground. And I mean, you can have like high Meyer lemon production, basically. Wow. So this stays fairly warm. Like if there's a snowstorm, this is what happens inside here. It stays warmer than the outside. And I would say when there's a snowstorm, a heavy freeze, it really buffers the intense cold because when we have our coldest times, it's sunny and it, helps to warm up the stone and also the, the rainwater collection here, the tank right here, this fills with water and the low southern sun will shine on this and this water acts as a temperature moderator for the greenhouse as well. Oh, that's great. And it collects the water off of this roof right here. You know, we get 42 inches, three and a half feet of rain okay. in a year. So even okay. like this greenhouse roof right here, I mean, with, that I made from a carport. This is an old carport frame, but I made this um, out of old windows and the carport frame. So you can see like, these are like tabletops, you oh, know, yeah. and different uh -huh. like- <laughs> I see it now. Yeah, it's kind of funky, you know? Oh, it's funky. Scavenging and you know. So it's yeah. interesting because uh, it's hot outside and I have the feeling it's almost nicer here than outside now. Yeah. And yeah. It's a yeah, it's a greenhouse. Yeah, that's because this is a north. So I actually like, I wanted to create, like right now it would be much hotter if we didn't have uh, the solid roof and this wall back here. So when the sun is overhead in the summertime, I have this little shady pocket. And then when the sun is low on the horizon in the wintertime, the sunlight comes all the way back to here. It's great. It's true. Normally you enter a greenhouse in the summer. Yeah. It's so hot and this feels good. And then there's a temperature exchange that goes on between ah. the greenhouse and the chickens, oh. right? Because okay. the chickens nest boxes are actually right here, right? So when I open this up and right now, um, they're not laying in the nest boxes. They are laying over here. So I have this little grabber <laughs> that I use yeah. to get the eggs. So That's yeah, fine. we got uh, seven eggs. Not yeah. Bad. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So yeah, you can see like I've got like <gasps> lots, of eggs. lots of eggs. Yeah, totally. Nice. <laughs> oh, so great. Yeah. There's kind of the last of our honey. I mean, what do these things cost in the store right now? Probably like 18 or 20 bucks for a jar yeah. of honey. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I hope to get this year, I hope to get up to 20 of these wow. jars, which wow. isn't actually even that much, you know, but it's nice. it's yeah, such good honey. Yeah. yeah, it's really, really good. This is the gateway to relief every morning. I call this my office, but then I have my, my real office. So this is the compost toilet. My son and I built this here. It's very simple, just a bucket and chuck it method. Where basically I have a bucket and sawdust and I just put that in a compost pile. So you built this because obviously you have a toilet in the house, but yeah. the idea is that like... You know. Yeah, I mean, nutrient cycling, and it's not just nutrient cycling, it's actually like the fact of 
mixing your poop with clean water. This is a very unsophisticated, this is the most unsophisticated, simple method, which yeah. is, it, you have to be a good composter. It also, I mean, I also like the way uh, you use some um, materials from your garden with the shingles, the bamboo. Yeah, the bamboo. I mean, and this is like a door. My friend was, had the pile of stuff from some house he tore down. Yeah. I mean, it's not that you can see it from all over. I mean, I mean, part of it was like, this is a very pleasant place to come and do your business. <laughs> you know, it's like to come, I walk through the, like I have like, like going to the bathroom for me in this building is like a pleasurable experience. I take a walk through the Willow Archway. I've got, I've got Gumi Berries right here. I can sit here and nosh some Gumi Berries on the way over. You know, it's like, why can't you have a good time when you do your business? Like, why can't that be a thing, right? And a voyage. And a voyage. And I sit here and I look out and the, these are more Jerusalem artichokes right here. I mean, and I see the birds come by and like, I actually, you know, spend more time here than I would in a normal bathroom. Nice. These are Josta berries and they're very delicious. Okay. I really like creating like mm. little areas, like, like even though my yard is only a third of an acre, I really like having lots of division and small zones within that. This is actually, this whole thing is my laundry gray water system. This house is from 1937. There was an old septic tank that was not in use anymore. So I found this, so I found this concrete trough and I filled it with rock and soil and that is right here. And I put these wetland plants in here to treat the laundry water and also the water from the roof, right? So this is slough sedge, this is a native sedge. And this, I'm, I'm really excited. I finally got cattails to establish in here. So cattails are like the quintessential wetland treatment plant. And now for the first time, I'm just about to having my very first cattail bloom. And I just love the cattail flowers. So I'm really excited that my wastewater treatment system has so much beauty and joy, you know? Yeah. So all this right you're in right now is wastewater. It's treatment. pretty much this right here and then it overflows. This is where the old septic tank was. And then it overflows to this basin right here. Yeah. And then also all the water, the rainwater from the back of the house is for the most part channeled into here. So this is where like I'm concentrating all of this runoff into the wastewater treatment and then into this basin right here where I've planted things that can tolerate flooding and then dry times, right? So like this is, I planted a quince, but I grafted on, this is my very favorite pear variety. This is a seckle pear. So I grafted this seckle pear on, so this is gonna grow into a tree. You can see the quince is still up here. And then, you know, we've got comfrey and we've got colt's foot and we've got Douglas spirea, that pink flowering plant, which is a beautiful native plant that can tolerate both flooding and dry. Oh. And of course, the mother of all herbs, yarrow. This is like the primo herbal medicine for so many different things. Like I use it for like a sore throat. I'll gargle with it basically. Okay. But also it's just a, a great flowering plant that provides a lot of, you know, nectar and stuff. You know, you, ha you have to put natives in the system. Uh -huh. So the native species, when the native pollinators come, they're like, oh, yarrow, I know that one. Oh, look, Douglas spirea. Oh, I know that one. And so you kind of keep the native pollinators around. So when you see things that are not food plants, you have to understand that you want to create a supportive ecosystem. So I have my gardens, but I also have an ecosystem that attracts pollinators. So even when my garden plants aren't flowering, my yarrow or my spirea or any of these other plants are flowering. And so I'm creating a, an ecosystem that supports the conditions for garden plants, basically. So that's where it's like, oh, is this edible? Like, no but it adds to the diversity that supports the edible species. Yeah. So this is interesting because I have a rule. I will not put anything in my yard waste bin. Okay. I will not export any biomass off of the property. 
And so you can imagine with all these trees, I mean like I prune insanely. I produce a lot of woody material of biomass every year. And so what you're looking at right now, you see how my neighbor's yard is lower, is how much lower my neighbor's yard is right there. Uh, my yard used to be no. that low. I've built this entire part of the yard up over this time by taking all of my prunings and piling them, piling them, piling, piling. And then when I do some, like when I dig out some area, like, oh, I showed you the gray water system. I showed you the greenhouse. When I dig that area, I take the soil and I bury it. And so I've basically built up my entire yard with woody biomass. So that's like how many feet, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I would say I've built it up about four feet. Right, and this is like when you pile sticks, you know, it breaks down. So I mean, this is like I've been doing this for 12 years, and I've built up this entire part of the yard. And so this is like the spongiest. I mean, imagine what the soil is like underneath here. It's four feet of wood that's been breaking down for a decade, basically. And I just keep incrementally adding more, adding more, adding more soil. And so I don't know. I just think it's something kind of cool, you know, that you don't have to send your yard waste out to the city collection. And then I planted the bamboo. It's the best edible variety. It's Phyllostachys dulcis, which is called, dulcis is like sweet, sweet shoot bamboo. And so now I'm letting it just creep this way here. And so I use it for, you know, all kinds of building projects. And then once I feel like this thing is really enough and I want to start controlling its size, I'll start harvesting the shoots and eating it. And, and also this is a really nice uh, windbreak because this is the west. So a lot of our biggest storms come from the west, from the coast there. And so this is kind of a windbreak for the garden, you know, because bamboo, I mean, it really moves with the wind and stuff. But you can see this is, I mean, as far as using this practically for fencing and all kinds of stuff, yeah. I mean, I, I love having bamboo available to build with, you know, anytime I can come and just harvest some and use it for my chicken fencing, I'll use it there, or just like trellising. So yeah. why bothering with Home Depot or whatever? I mean, yeah, exactly. you can go in the garden and yeah. just... Uh... A lot of people are bamboo phobic. In this climate where it's so dry during the summer, bamboo at a certain point, like it, it, it doesn't spread if it doesn't have water quickly. If it's not irrigated, then the spread is not that fast. And so you can really kind of control it. And in the springtime, it, it pops up. And if you just kick the shoots down, then it won't grow in that location. People so. are afraid of, of, uh, of, uh, of spreading. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you just, it's, it's just about management, you know, and you just have to kind of police your boundary. So, I mean, I have boundaries, like at certain points, like if it starts to come up too far that direction, I'll just kick it over as it's coming up and just keep it under control that way. So yeah, bamboo is only a problem if you're not managing it, basically. This is my office right here. So this was actually a shed, 10 by 12 shed, and we realized that we could turn it into an office and create this. So I mean, I had the loft and everything, so it's insulated now, and this is where I do most of my work here in this space. Yeah. It was a garden shed? It was just a storage shed. Like you can see, we, we put in this uh, sliding glass door, right? And so I work here and I have my garden right here. So for me, it's the perfect relationship between work and garden, because I'll be sitting here and I'll be like, whoa, the chickens are being really loud. Oh, there's something wrong. I'll go out there. Oh, they're, you know, the food, they're out of food. Or I'll, or I'll hear the, the humming of the bees. I'll suddenly be like, oh my God, my bees are swarming. Cause I'll hear it just sitting here and working in my office, you know? So, um, so when you asked earlier, Oh, how did you like take care of this garden? And I feel like I'm, I mean, I'm very blessed to have developed this over the year, but I feel like my, my work and play relationship is very, it's very nice. Yeah. yeah. It's fluid. Yeah. It's fluid. <laughs> exactly. And it's nice. I mean, it feels good in here. It doesn't feel like a shed. No, no, it's not a shed. And cause we, we closed in the carport and made the carport into the shed, right? Mm. And then turn the shed into the office and now everything is complete in a sense. <laughs> yeah.
I love elephant garlic, yeah. you know? Um, and it's actually ready to harvest right now. I mean, I love it. A lot of people are like, why don't you have a farm? I, I mean, if you're gonna do a farm, like that's all you do basically. And I'm like, man, I am so happy in my compact little paradise right here. I get so much food out of this place. You know, I just, I love it. Woo! Look at that. Oh, wow. I mean, that, that is a nice elephant garlic. It's so much garlic. Yeah. Okay, so look at this piece right here. Look at the size of my patch, right? I mean, <laughs> this is- That's more than you can This eat. is more than we need for a year. Yeah. In this little, this is like six by, seven or something this is like you know 40 45 square feet of elephant garlic and i mean you know i understand like the scale of having a farm is this enormous amount of work cool. and it is amazing on a small scale people discount the power of taking many small spaces and turning them into these abundant food producing little nature paradises. <laughs> we are in Wonder Run or something. Doesn't it? Like everything's grown, like, like, right? The wrong size. Like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, like, right, right, like extra big, yeah, totally. Yeah, so cool. So fun.